What's going on guys welcome back to season 4 Mantle 24 San Jose Sharks franchise mode series as always guys Thank you so much for supporting the last episode with my leaving a thumbs up in this one as well I'd really appreciate it. We're currently 4 one one the preseason Thomas Hurdle there has seven points in six games And now last season guys we actually made the playoffs for the first time beating our rival the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round Unfortunately, we lost to the Canucks in the second round who went on to win the Stanley Cup So I think that's you know a pretty good sign honestly this year's team's even better than last year's I feel like we're looking really good I wouldn't go so far to say we're stacked but I feel like next season we honestly might be if we get the right growth. So the first line there is crazy. Ovechkin, Smith, and Ranchin, all 90 plus. I mean, Ranchin with the plus three count, playing like a 99. You got Zetterlin, Hurdle, Eklund on the second line, they got a plus four. Musty, Couture, Wisebot on the third. Musty, you know, not too bad. We're giving him a shot there on the third line. See if he'll run with it or not. Fourth line there, you got Philip Bystep, playing Svechkov, Bordalo. Eventually, he is definitely like our weakest spot. Chicker and Addison's a very good top pair behind that though. You got Nemich and Muhammad Lind with Kalen and Hudson on the bottom pair. So obviously a few of these guys are lower rated, but all three guys have immediately potential. Nemich, Hudson, and Kalen. So they're just gonna keep getting better. Goaltending wise, Daigle here, his rookie season as a goalie, 83 overall. Blackwood backing off, there's 82. You look at the power play, I feel like power play one, feeding Ovi the puck here should be deadly. Even power play two there looks pretty solid. Uh, the four mans as usual aren't too bad. PK wise as well, we're solid. Like Will Smith, Zerland, both very good two-way players. Same goes for Eklund, Svechkov, um, even, you know, Musty Borlo on that third unit. I feel like uh, we're pretty solid throughout with the special team. So this team should make the playoffs again this season, you know, pending any unlucky Sims. AHL wise even, I mean, come on, I showed it last episode. This has to be the best line I've ever had on an AHL team. Sawgas, Banak, Eklund. All 80 plus, they get a plus five count, so they're playing like 85 or higher, and they're all medium elites. They could have been rookies in the NHL this year. I figured, you know what, let's just leave them there, as only one of them could have made the third line. Next year, we'll call them up, because probably losing a few guys, and they'll just dominate, I think, as rookies. One of them better when they call their uh, Maggio, Nestoranko, Yakubov's on the second line. Zebra's down the AHL, playing Veronka, Paltonen, who's an 80, actually. Co, Lund, Hughes. AHL team looks sick. Like, defensively, not too bad. Honestly, I was looking at it too. I feel like the current NHL top six we could have for the rest of this series, as they're all quite young. So, obviously, we might have to trade a guy due to contract reasons or whatever. And I would like to get Cole Hudson in the NHL eventually, but basically, all I'm saying is we could be set at defense for the next five years. Uh, Olsen there is an NHL starter as well, 78 high starter. So, like I said, guys, I think we're pretty set here for both teams. Now, before we get started here with the Sim guys, I will show the ratings heading into this year. As you can see here, we've got 97 offense, 89 defense, and 82 goaltending. Hopefully that's good enough. Also too, I just realized Zegers now on the Flames. They must have given an offer sheet because it did show me in free agency. That's kind of crazy. And real quick here, guys, I want to thank N1Bet for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are interested in sports betting or online casinos, they're the place to go. One thing I actually like about them is the fact that you can actually bet on OHL games. I'm a big OHL fan, Spitfire season ticket holder. So you don't see this too often. Very, very cool. Again, it's a variety of sports. You guys can see whether you're into soccer, basketball, ice hockey. Of course, they got the NFL there too. Tons of different sports to choose from. They've also got an online casino if you guys are interested in like blackjack or roulette as well too. They've actually got esports available to bet on, which I thought was kind of crazy. So you can see there, Dota 2, CS2, Valorant. They've even got like FIFA it looks like. So again, tons of different options. If you guys are of legal age and you want to give it a try, uh, you can sign up using my code TACTICS. Just enter all your info here. And then once you're signed up and you go to make your first deposit, enter my bonus code of TACTICS and you'll get your 100% deposit bonus up to $3,000 Canadian. So if you spell my name correctly, you'll see this little box here showing that the bonus has been added. If this interests you guys at all, click my link in the description box below and don't forget to use my code TACTICS for that 100% deposit bonus. Now guys, let's get back to the video. And actually too guys, before I forget, we got some big contract extensions to give out. So uh, looking at it here, Will Smith, 91 overall, definitely got to get him signed. 9.3 for the next four, that's actually really fair. I think he'd probably take like an 875, something like that. For his rating, I think that's, you know, very good contract. Ovechkin Addison, we can't extend. Uh, they're both on one year. So sure we could. Let's see what he's asking for as an 85. He's asking for 875. Are you kidding me? He wants a raise from 8 million. He did have a solid year last year, but he's 37. So if he keeps asking for that much money, I think we're not bringing the captain back. Uh, Simon Nemich here, 83, wants 4.4. That's pretty fair. Four years. Okay, so let's even do 4.4 for four. Just triple fours there. After him, by Stet, we actually can't extend. Kalen here's an 81. He wants 4.2. One year, 2.9. He's playing on the bottom pair, so he's not really going to have the production to demand that money. I think we wait. To get him cheaper now Hudson here wants 850k on a one year two years oh wow I think we go for the four year like sort of bridge deal if he'll take I don't know like two five or four years I think that's a really good contract he's playing bottom pair but only 80 overall meme elite should grow Daigle we've got for the next three years entry level which is honestly gonna be such an advantage for us and there we go guys then we to accept 4.4 by four Hudson as well the four year two and a half million 
We can hear back from Smith, 875. He said yes too. Okay, so I think those were three very good contracts. And look at this, guys. I just went through the first game. We beat the earliest 4-3. And Longature assisted on every single goal. Four assists in his first game. The captain wants to get paid. All right, guys. So it's now the end of December. We have a record of 21-9-3. We're currently first place there in the division. Love seeing that. AHL team also doing well. 19-9-2. Currently third. Leading score here. Is it Yakupov again? No, it's Abenak. One of the rookies. Love it. 30 points there, so he's a point per game. NHL-wise, Rantanen's got 55 and 33. Well on his way to 100 point season. He's crushing it right now. Hopefully, he can keep that up. And we're now the trade deadline here. The record of 37, 21, and 3. The team continues to play well. We're still holding on to that first spot in the division. AHL team, second place in their division. They're 32, 19, and 3. So, both teams are looking good here. Eklund in the AHL's got 50 and 54. NHL-wise, still Rantanen. He's up to 84 and 61 now. So, like I said, should be on his way to 100 points. We'll get to the deadline, see if we can add. We're definitely full on buyers this year, unlike last season. We didn't know what we get in, what we not. This season, we're, you know, pretty much should be a lock. Don't want to jinx it though. So, Mark Stone there could take him from our rival. One year left. Interesting. Shea Theodore, Erickson Eck, Mackenzie Weger, Thomas Shabbat, Pavel Zach up to an 88. Barrett Hayton, Ryan Hartman, Josh Anderson. He's up to an 87. That's kind of nuts. Close Giroux. Okay, so honestly, tons of options here. I'm not even sure. I think Mark Stone's value is probably a little bit too high for us, but I definitely wouldn't mind Claude Giroux just to fill out the third line. Right now we got Quentin Musty playing there, who's okay, but I mean, 87 Giroux, obviously a big upgrade. And look at the value there, like so small, especially compared to Stone's. I know he has, you know, 91 overall there, way better, but we'll take a look at both. I'm leaning probably Giroux. Wow, look at this, guys. Gabriel Day was already at 87. Season isn't even over yet. I was gonna say how I wanted to check and see his stats from this season. Are you kidding me? And he's got below 900. All right, so he's gained four overall, about two-thirds of the way through the season. And he doesn't even have a 900 save percentage. Minnesota here, Zucker, Spurgeon, a third and a fourth for first, a second, LaRock. I don't want to do this. Spurgeon actually, you know, could be good, although I've seen his potential there with seventh D. I'm looking at Mark Stone's trade value there. He's going to cost us so much. Like, again, I just don't think it's worth it. Now, out of curiosity, before we try to make a trade for Giroux, I want to see what Spurgeon's rating is at this point. I mean, he's not even up here. That's not good. Oh, no. Is Spurgeon? Yeah, he's an 81. So they were basically trying to steal some picks from us. Now, before we make this trade, guys, they should check Musty's stats. 25 points in 62 games. It's not terrible, but it's also not amazing. Like I said, I think Giroux is a big upgrade. So can play him at wing, can play him at center, making 7 million bucks. Wow. He's got, quick math, 67 points right now in 63 games, over a point per game, 86 face-offs there. Like I said, can play anywhere. He's still quick, too. 90 speed, excel and agility. At 39 years old, I don't know about that one. I'm like literally getting faster, but I'll take it. I start trying to make a trade for Drew with Ottawa. They offer us Batherson, Branch, and Benning for a first, Hudson, a second, and a seventh. I'm going to say no. I think I'm going to keep Hudson. Now I'm curious about Batherson. Would he make more sense than Drew? Making less money, one overall lower, can also play center or wing. He's got 36 points on the year. So Drew is, you know, putting up a lot more. Playmaker there. I feel like Batherson could be a playmaker or a sniper. Honestly, he's got really good stats. Kind of all across the board. But Bastion here actually has more trade value than Giroux. Probably because he's 11 years younger. Even though he has one overall less. So I think I'm going to stick with trying to get Giroux. Looking at the players they want. I feel like Adams here we just signed 2062. Uh, he's the worst of those prospects for sure. I just realized I actually don't even have a first round pick this year's draft. It's next year everyone's trying to get our first. I would do the medium top six in a second for Giroux. Looks to be pretty equal to me. I think that's, you know, a reasonable add. One nice thing, too, we have a lot of cap space, so we can just take back the whole salary. We don't have to retain 50%. Let's see what the Suns say here. Trades rejected, just a bit low. Okay, so we'll have to throw in a 7th. We do have two 7th this year, so uh, better on ourselves. We'll trade ours, keep the abs. Does suck on a 1, 2, or 3, but, I mean, the team is just stacked with prospects, so I think we'll be all right. Suns say yes. Again, I think Giroux, pencil in on the third line. Probably have Musty go down to the 4th and either Bystead or Bordalo. I'll just be scratched the rest of the season. And I was just going off here, guys. Justin Falk in a third for London, a fourth. London there, medium top six. I mean, we can take a look here at Falk because our defense, like I said, is a bit weak. We've got a lot of young guys there who are coming up. Falk's an 82 now. Okay, I thought he was still an 84, 85, and 82 overall. Definitely reject. And we just got another offer here, guys, for the St. Louis Blues. Tori Krug and a few picks for Zetterberg, a third and a fourth. Krug would have to be, I don't know, at least 85. Even then, I'd probably swap out with Zetterberg. He's an 84. 22 points, 60 games, minus 18. Honestly, yeah, I don't think it makes sense. Zetterberg's a solid prospect. He's 78 now at 20 years old. I think he eventually makes our team, so 
Another one here we're saying no to with the blues. All right, guys, so the trade deadline is now complete. We just made the one trade there for Drew. I feel like that was the only move we really had to make. Hopefully, our defense holds up. So, the rest of these trades, Grayanov there to the Ducks, Provorov to the Canadians. Let's see, you got Shillington to the Wild, Freddie Goudreau to the Rangers. You got Mackenzie Weir there going from the Flames to the Oilers for two firsts and Muse. Wow, Muse is a solid prospect with two firsts. Oilers just paid a huge price for Uyghur, plus getting him from, of course, the Alberta rival, our trade for Giroux, Nicholas Haig, Matthew Phillips there to the Rangers for a first and a second. That seems like a steep price to pay there for the Rangers. Barrett Hayton to the Buffalo Sabres. Arizona gets a good return. Red Wings there gave a first round pick for Ryan Hartman. So honestly, a ton of first round picks flying around here. And yeah, this Edmonton-Calgary trade, like that's nuts. Barkley Goodrow on waivers, 3.6 million. I'm gonna pass on him. And now for the trade deadline, here's an update look at the team. Ovechkin's actually dropped the range to 87, but the first line's gone up in chemistry to plus four, thanks to Will Smith. Now having the quick draw zone ability, I think two might have added ankle breaker. Second line as well had a plus four before. Now they have a plus five thanks to Will Eklund gaining the third eye X factor. Third line there, I thought was Giroud would go up in chemistry, but they did not. You can see Wiseblad on his right wing, Kachar on his left. Musty's now playing on the fourth line because of that bystead scratch the rest of the season. I think too, the only other change would be power play two. Giroud is actually a distributor there, feeding the puck to hurdles. So hopefully, you know, bringing him in, veteran presence helps out this team. Here we go guys, right there this season now with a record of 50, 28, and 4. This team put up 50 wins three years after being one of the worst teams in the NHL. As you can see there, we have 104 points on the season. Love seeing that AHL team there, 39, 27, and 4. They might miss the playoffs. Give me close though. Leading score there, Victor Eklund. Again, Will Eklund's brother. He's got 65 and 70. Pretty solid. Ranch in finished 107 points. We said he's, you know, on pace to hit 100 points. So, Love seeing that. Could he jump up to a 97? Probably not, but that'd be nuts. Ovechkin, 106. That's why he paid him 12.5 for one year. He's 41 now, though. Good chance he retires. He gets 60 goals as well. Are you kidding me? Again, actually, it was only 12 million bucks. So, so we essentially paid him 200k per goal, which honestly I'm fine with. Will Smith there, 86 points. I think he could get up to a 92. Actually, look at that. He's got highly potential now instead of medium. You got Giroud there with 78. Let's see how he did on our team. 11 and 20, playing third line. So minus three. That's honestly probably the biggest worry. Addison 68, another solid season. Couture 62. I don't know how he's getting that done at 38. Eklund 57, not bad. So low franchise. Actually at 88 now. We handled it in here at 51. I think that's solid. Hurdle, not the best season from him. Less than 50 points. But it's definitely a little bit worrisome, especially with, you know, 8 million bucks the next four years. Now at 33. Maybe a guy we move on from. Zedlin as well, only at 40. He was playing second line. Good thing is, though, he's very solid defensively. So beat on that first PK unit, I don't mind it. Like, Wiseblatt there was playing third line. Had the same amount of points. 13 minutes a night. Yeah, Zeland had almost 18. Musty, 30. Not too bad. So, I mean, overall, pretty happy with the performance here. Let's see. Daigle, just above 900 there with a 901. 3.3 goals against. Actually got five X-Factors already. Probably have a stone ability very soon. He's already at 89. He's gained one more roll since the deadline. This guy, I mean, he should be a cheat code based on the rating, but based on the actual performance, he is basically just a regular goalie, which I'll never understand. AHL-wise, Olsen here, very solid numbers. 907, 279. The rest of the skaters, Eklund there, Lynn scoring, followed by Manak, Maju at 50, Sagas here, 47 points, 37 goals, and 10 assists. So, um, Eklund, Manak, they're just feeding this guy the puck. I feel like that line could definitely work in the NHL. Veronka, Yakupov, Hughes, all at 40 plus. I think Hughes was playing fourth line, so yeah, he was. Maybe we gotta give him a bit more ice time, which honestly he should have if that line of rookies makes it up to the NHL next year. So, yeah, I'll look at the HL team. Pretty happy with that. Are you kidding me, guys? Look at this. Miko Rantanen potentially winning the Art Ross Trophy. I just noticed some teams still have a game to play, but he's got 107 points. So we'll see when the awards come out, whether or not he holds on to that. Kaprizov there, 63 goals. So I think that's the tiebreaker. He gets one point in his last game. Same with Matthews. Ovechkin also at 106, putting him in the top five. Like, that is crazy. Those two popped off together. McDavid, Stutzla, Malkin. Look at all these guys, 100 plus points. I mean, even Crosby, 39 years old, 102, like him and Ovechkin, just the ageless wonders. Looking at goals here, so yeah, Kaprizov first, 63. Ovechkin, though, did finish second. Looking at defensive scoring now, Kelmick card, 99, only six goals, but 93 assists. Just ridiculous. And look at this again, Addison on the top page. Checking out goalies here. Daigle at most wins, 42. As a rookie, K, okay, he could definitely win the Calder Trophy. Like, having the most wins in the NHL as a rookie goalie is kind of unheard of. I mean, I don't know if they're going to give it to him because save percentage wasn't that great. Blackwood actually had the best in the league. Unfortunately, he's a backup. The best for a starter, Shesterkin there, 9-1-2. Blackwood also the second best goals against, but in terms of a starter, it's Kolosov there. So now I'm wondering, should Blackwood get the starts in the playoffs? Because in the games he played, one of the best goalies in the league. The thing is, like last year, we trusted him and it did not work out for us. Looking at rookie skaters next here, 
James Hayden, 63 points. Actually tied with Roger McQueen. He's the guy we almost drafted. This is kind of weird. Matthew Potro's a rookie, so I'm guessing the Bruins ended up not playing with the NHL the first season. Buried him until now, which is kind of weird. Um, I don't know about that one. Rookie goalies. Daigle's not even here. What the heck? It's literally his first season. And he's not getting counted as a rookie goalie. Come on, what is up with this game? Just gonna check his stats now, and yep, he's played the last two years in the queue. This is his first year in the NHL. Why is he not a rookie? Now, next year, guys, look at the entire league. Wow, Pittsburgh Penguins finished first there with 110 points. We were second, though, with 104. I guess there are some games left. We could get past. Uh, I, should, I apologize, I should have uh, simulated an extra game there. Got excited seeing we had 50 wins. Uh, Vegas, still not a confirmed spot. Canucks, also have 86, so... One of those who's going to squeak in will probably actually play rematch against Vegas or even a rematch against the Canucks in the first round. The worst team this year is Cowboys at 71 points. Honestly, isn't even that terrible. Like, not a historically bad year by any means. Most goals in the league. Winnipeg Jets were actually on the first page, though. We finished sixth there. Surprised Canucks, you know, doing so bad with one of the better goals for. Best goals against in the league, the Philadelphia Flyers. And we're not on the first page, so I think that does show, you know, our defense could be better. Same with the goaltending. And look at this, guys. In the first round, we've actually got the Edmonton Oilers. So we get to play McDavid and try saddle round one. Lucky us. Hopefully they don't have much depth on this team. I mean, they are running try saddle McDavid and Hyman on the first line. It's now a 91. Wow, he's actually getting his own ability. Browns up to 86. Playing with Nudes, there's 89. Hallway got to an 84. Bottom six is pretty meh. Kane's all the way down to a 79. Defensively, of course, that huge trade for Uyghur. Play with Bouchard, 86. Broberg, Nurse, Alexiak, McNabb. Goaltending, Gustafson on the team. 86. Campbell's still there. They still paying his contract. One year left on that $5 million deal. Okay, so I mean, the Oilers made that big trade for Uyghur. We gotta hopefully, you know, make Ken Holland look foolish here. Send them home in round one. Of course, we're on the home ice advantage here, guys. First two games in the Shark Tank in San Jose. And we get two losses. Alright. Luckily, the second at least went to OT. Please don't be swept. Head to Edmonton now. Game three was also a loss. 4-3. Okay, game four, we win 4-3. We have some life. Can we reverse feed them like we reverse throughout the Vegas Golden Knights? Well, are you kidding me? 6-5 OT win game 5? I don't know why this team has to do this to me. Make me all stressed out. Game 6? 8-1 win. This team again <laughs> forces game 7. Backs against the wall down 3. There's no way we can do this in back-to-back -back years, is there? Game 7 at home? Ugh, down early. 2-0 McDavid seasons. And 3-2. Are you Addison, Ranton, and Kalanen? We have a huge second answer back. We're actually outshooting them now. Miko Ranton adds another. There is no way. Like I said last episode, I think four times in NHL history, a team's done a reverse sweep. To do it back-to-back -back seasons is literally unprecedented. It will, it will never be done. Logature, the captain, makes it 5-2. to two. We've scored five unanswered. Less than five to go now. We're up three. Nuge makes it a 5-3 game. Two and a half to go. One and a half. All right, we hold on there for the reverse sweep. <laughs> I don't know how he pulled that off. And next year, guys, in round two, we got the Seattle Kraken. So it's the Battle of the Sea Monsters. Or I guess a shark's not really a sea monster. It's the Battle of the Sea Creatures, I should say. Sharks versus the Kraken. Take a look at that team. I'm honestly not sure. I think they drafted Michael Misa, though, right? So, yeah. I mean, okay. Beneers, Misa, right? Are you kidding me? McCann's on the first lines in 89. Save Bucinavich. Eberle's still there. Gord, Wenberg, Tolman as well. Uh, fourth line there. Nyman, Bjork, and Yamamoto. Defensively, they got 88 done. Severus is on the team now. D'Angelo, Evans, Susie, Clifton. So defense is pretty average. Stuart Skinner is actually their starting goalie. Grubauer backing him up. So here we go, guys. Again, home ice advantage. First two games in San Jose. And we actually pick up a couple wins. 7-6 and then a 4 nothing shutout there for Daigle. Head to Seattle now. 5-2 loss game 3. 5-1 win game 4. Just have to win one more here to move on to the conference final. Oh my goodness. We lose two straight. So again, we're fighting here for our lives. Game seven at home. Come on, boys. Get this done. We're up one. Thomas Hurdle. Power play goal. Still one nothing. Third period now. Pretty much equal shots here. Zetterlin. <laughs> the teams are both like tealish, so I wasn't sure at first. Zetterlin makes it 2 nothing though. Ten minute mark. Halfway through the period. Just hold on. Lock it down. Shut down defense. Please. Three and a half. Two. One. 40 seconds. Let's go. We're moving on to the conference final. All right, guys. Who are we going to play? We got the Winnipeg Jets. All right. This should be a good one. We're 8-6 and six right now. The fact that you know, both series gone game 7 is crazy. Will Smith there. 17 points in 14 games. Love seeing that from our first line center. Could probably have more than 3 goals, but definitely will take the points. So, the Jets. 
You got 92 Connor, 91 Perfetti. They got Olsen, has got for an 87. Must have had like a resurgence here after getting traded from Buffalo. Yeah, wow. Goes to Vegas, 61, 69, 67. Good for him. Velarde there, Shifley, Ehlers. I have fell even 87. You kidding me? Brad Lambert, Chibrikov. You got Rachevsky, Bamstrom, Barlow. Look at the defense. Morrissey's a 90 now. I totally forgot they drafted Lefshinov, fifth overall. Dumba, Wallman, Hanola, Pionk. Gold tiny wise, Hellebuck's still there, 88. Lankin and backing him up. So this Jets team looks good. I, our offense is probably a little bit better, but it's very close. Defensively, they might, they probably have us. And then gold tiny wise, I mean, I was going to say they have us, but Tegel's actually higher rated than Hellebuck. I just, I don't know. So uh, the Jets here actually must have uh, passed us there for the Western Conference title. One game left in the regular season because they got the home ice advantage. Head to Winnipeg here. Game one. Down 2 nothing. Levshinov Olofsson. And still 2 nothing. 3 nothing. All right, never fun getting shut out in the first game, but hopefully it can answer back. Game two here, guys, need to tie this series up. After 1-1-0, one, one, Will Smith, they're shorthanded. Let's go. 2-1, to one, Giroux, the big trade deadline acquisition. Coley Barlow for them. 3-3, three to three, they force OT. Giroux gets another. I have fellow Ehlers. Two unanswered goals. We need a hero here. And we get one. Longature, the captain. Let's go. Here we go, guys. Game three are now back home in San Jose. 2-0 lead for them. I have fellow Shifley. 4-1, Ovechkin's got our lone goal. 6-3, we fought back a little bit. Ranch in there getting two goals. Unfortunately, too little, too late. Here we go, guys. Game four, chance to tie the series up again. And after one, three to two, Nemec, Ovechkin, Ranton scoring for us. I actually just Googled it. Apparently, Nemec's name is pronounced Nemets. That's just crazy to me, but I guess, you know, it's because it's Slovakian. Six to four now, Ovechkin with another. Wiseblad, Bordalo, crazy high scoring game. And we were able to hold on to that one with zero goals in the third, tying the series up two to two. So, this is a nail baiter for sure. We're in a battle here with the Jets. Hopefully, we can get the lead for the first time in this series. Game five now in Winnipeg. Let's get it done. First period and 0-0, zero, zero. all right? Second period, we're up one, hurdle. Third period, three nothing, let's go. Hurdle again and Weisblatt. The veterans are honestly showing up for this team. I feel like a and hurdle just done losing. They're trying to make their first ever Stanley Cup final. We got two games here. Just have to win one of them to make that happen. Game six, we're up one early. Rantanen on the power play. Three nothing, Giroux and Rantanen again. And four to one, Rantanen. Is that a hat trick for him? I feel like, yeah, he scored a goal in every single period. So there we go, Ranton gets a Hattie to secure our spot in the second final. Definitely worth like the 15 and a half million we paid him. And look at this guys, we got the Montreal Canadiens here in the Stanley Cup final. If you guys didn't watch my Washington Capitals franchise mode series, they were an absolute dynasty. So hopefully we can shut them down. Will Smith there has got 25 points down in 20 games. This Montreal team, I'm very curious, I don't think we've seen too much about them so far in this series. So here we go, they got Celebrini. Yeah, I forgot that one, who <laughs> took first overall 2024. Playing with Suzuki and Caulfield. What a nasty first line. That is just sick. You got Anderson, Hiddle, Sokoski on the second. He's up to an 88 now. Heinemann there with Doc and Waugh. Misar, Newhook, Farrell. I mean, very good forward group. Defensively, this is where their weak spot for sure. You got 84, 85, 83, 85, 85, 84. All right, I take that back. It's not their weak spot, but they have like no true number one. Although they do have very good depth, which clearly is getting it done for them. Goal tiny, they got an 84 Samsonov, 83 Lennox backing him up. Kind of like the defense, good goalie depth, but they don't really have a, you know, true number one in my opinion. I feel like that'd be an 85 plus in my mind. So I like our chances here. Regular season, we had seven more wins. So far in the playoffs though, we actually lost four more games. Here we go guys, we got the home ice advantage. Game one, Stanley Cup final. I can't believe the Sharks are here so fast. And it's 2-1 after one. Zettel in there and Giroux, so Koski for them. Still 2-1. And we hold on, 3-2. Ovechkin there with the game winner. Here we go guys, game number two. Can we go up 2-0 in the series? 1-0 in the game, Ovechkin, again, 4-1, to one, let's go. As I mentioned, guys, the veterans, they want this cup. Kachur and Hurley score, same with Chikrin, so Koski for them, and we hold on there, 4-1, to one, even after getting outshot. Wow, what a start here, winning the first two games. Now, we're heading to Montreal, always hard to play in the Bell Center, but we have a chance here to sweep the Stanley Cup final. Can't get ahead of ourselves, gotta win the third game first, but maybe we can get it done. After one, it's 3-2, to two. Bordelow, Hurdle, Zedelin, Anderson, Pogorov for them. 5-3 now. Smith with a couple. Coughlin with one. We hold on. 5-4. Joshua Waugh pulled it close. Luckily, the team put on the clamps. And they were able to hold on to that Game 3 win. This is crazy, guys. 3-0 series lead now in the Stanley Cup Final. In fact, we were down 3-0 in the first round. And we find ourselves here. It's just insane. Game 4. Can we do the unthinkable? Period 1. They're up 2-1. Anderson Caulfield. Ranton has a power play goal. After 2, it's still 2-1. We've got to resume this thing because we could definitely come back. We scored like... <laughs> Look at that, immediately Giroux gets one. Even strength ties it up. 
No way. I was going to say they have a power play. Oh, come on. Musty got a shorthanded goal. Coughlin immediately answered back, like, less than 30 seconds later. Montreal's on the power play again. or about halfway through the game. So, Koski, as soon as the power play ends, makes it 4-3. to three. They got another power play. Our team's just undisciplined. Three minutes left. Can we have something here? We had a power play late, unfortunately. Could not find that game-tying goal. So, no sweep, unfortunately. But we are headed home now for Game 5. Chance to win the Stanley Cup in San Jose. Can we get this done? Here you go, guys. First period, we're up two. Ranton and Hudson. Hudson's been pretty quiet these playoffs. Five to one. Ranton in again. Ovechkin gets a couple. I mean, we're looking for not just the win with the hat trick now. Either Ranton or Ovi could get it done. We're doubling their shots, basically 31 to 14. There's the Ranton hat trick. His second in the playoffs. Are you kidding me? You might even have another one too. If there was a sick game where you didn't send period by period. Six to one for the San Jose Sharks. That Ranch and Ovechkin duel. I mean, I didn't plan on bringing Ovechkin back, but if he doesn't retire, Giroux has another. We honestly might have to. All right, intervening. 26 seconds left. I feel like I can safely just play the game, considering the fact it's 7-1. to one. We'll take a look at the ratings now. 98, 91, 88. They have 192, 83. So they had better offense and defensive rating, but our goal is better. Pretty crazy, too. Like, Daigle in his rookie season as a goalie had the most wins in the league. He's winning the Stanley Cup, kind of Matt Murray-esque, although he was like the full, you know, outright starter, opposed to Murray being the backup and coming in for the start that wasn't playing well. I feel like if Daigle is to win a award this season, something is messed up. So, killing there, a big hit. Just going to play out the last 20 seconds. I mean, we've got these young defensemen to build this team around. No reason why we can't win at least one more cup. Look at that nice little pass to Musty out front on Superstar. We're still putting in goals. Also, guys, I just noticed number six in Montreal. I'm not sure who that is, but he's wearing a cage. Reinbacker. I feel like you probably go to a visor, but what do I know? Three seconds, two seconds, one second left. There we go, guys. San Jose Sharks are Stanley Cup champs. Only took us four seasons. How crazy is that? The rookie goalie, the fact that we have that insane rookie line in the AHL waiting to come up, make this team even better. I feel like the future is very, very bright. Honestly, we got some you know big decisions to make. Do we bring back the captain and Couture? After winning the Stanley Cup, it'd feel wrong not to, but... Again, like, we gotta do what's right for the team. And look at this. Will Smith, first line center, gets the con Smythe. 35 points there. I'm really surprised Ranton didn't get it, having two hat tricks. But uh, Smith was just had a lot more points. And speaking of the captain, guys, here you have Longacher out to get the Stanley Cup. I love, too. You got, actually, the teal confetti this time around, opposed to... What was it always last year? Was it always red or always blue? I already forgot. But there you go. Longacher getting the Stanley Cup from the knockoff Gary Bettman. Rocking a solid playoff beard. You love to see that. I think he's got to go to Thomas Hurdle first. He better be an option. If he's not, I don't even know. Because that's the guy that deserves this cup. And he's not an option. All right. So at this point, I'm thinking Claude Giroux. He hasn't won a cup yet. I feel like, you know, Alex Ovechkin probably get it after him. Because Ovechkin's won a cup. Giroux has not. We've got him at the trade deadline. I'm sure he's very happy we trade for him. After Giroux here, guys. So tough choices. I think you probably give it to Ovechkin. Even though he's won a cup. He's 41. There's a good chance he's going to retire as a champion, which I think is pretty sick. Definitely looks weird seeing Ovi in these teal jerseys. Luckily, at least, you know, he's wearing his number eight. It's not retired for San Jose Sharks or anything, but he still got moves for his old age, too. A little, you know, spindle rama there. You got to like that. And now, finally here, guys, honestly, I think we got to give it to the rookie, Gabriel Dagler. Are you kidding me? Rookie goalie coming in, leading this team to a Stanley Cup. Like, get out of here. This dude deserves to lift that thing. Also, he wears number 21. I did not realize that. I'm, I'm going to Google if that's actually the number he wears in real life. Because that's a very interesting goalie number. And it looks like he does wear 21. But next year, guys, you have the famous team pick. Kachure right in the middle. Rantanen, Ovechkin behind them. Again, we got a solid squad there. So, uh, super happy about this win. Hopefully, can uh, win more here. Again, we got four more chances at this cup. And there's no reason to think this team's not going to continue to get better and better. And look at that, guys. Right there, you can see the names in the cup. San Jose Sharks, 26-27. Gotta love it. Also, guys, I totally forgot to check the HL team. As you can see, they did make the playoffs. Unfortunately, though, they got swept in the first round by the Canucks. And the playoffs are now complete. Of course, we won the Stanley Cup. Laval Rocket there. Wayne the Calder. Wayne here, of course, the draft lottery results. Arizona stays at 1. Boston stays at 2. Wait a minute. That happened last season as well. And I said oh, it almost never does. And back-to-back -back years, no pick changes. They're just trying to make me look like a liar, I guess. Uh, retired players. Again, will Ovi go to champion? I'm very curious. He does not. That's actually kind of crazy. Malkin, though, retires. Sam Pavelski there. Longtime Shark. Giroux retired as well. Eberle, Carter, Zuccarello, Latang. Roman Yossi's a big one. He was still in 85. Evander Kane, Jordan Stahl. Honestly, a lot of big names retiring here. You can see Spurgeon, of course, 
was offered to us in a trade. And looking at goaltenders next, Marc-Andre Fleury also retires there with Malkin. You got Talbot, Kemper, Dell. And like I said before, guys, Lovechkin now retiring. I feel like we have to try and bring him back because him and Ranchin were just too good of a duo. So we'll get to the draft here. Again, we got some tough decisions to make, some trades to make. Honestly, I probably should have checked some contract asks, but that's all right. We'll just kind of wing it here based on the old information we had. Landon Dupont going to go first overall. I think Vasily said he tried to adjust his ratings to be a little bit higher. We'll, we'll see if it happens or not. Uh, you got a bunch of media elites behind him. There's actually quite a bit there. The top seven all going to be elite. Looking at gems. Oh my goodness. So many gems. Okay. So I don't know like who's the best one here. Lundin, 92. I doubt he's a low bottom six. Um, after that, you actually got one bust. Richardson here is a guaranteed low top six. The thing is, for a third round pick, that's honestly not amazing. You can usually get better than that. Now, Cappy here guaranteed medium top six. It's Angel Eche one year. Getting him in the second round, if we end up having a second round pick, is a good value. Wait a minute, guys. Cooper Hubbard here. I'm looking at this goalie. He's supposed to be medium elite. Any chili TA there? Okay, never mind. They think it's Angel already, but I see the accuracy is not the greatest. I was honestly freaking out. Like, we just found a sick goalie. I mean, this guy, Corey Crawford, Angel ETA, two years, gonna go around the same spot. Again, this is only if we end up, you know, trading for some picks. Now, our scouts did do pretty good find some low elites here. Kerman, 170. Sedin, I like the last name, 187. Even Malkin there is supposed to be low elite, 193. Luckily, we have a bunch of late picks. And see, this is why the gem low top six doesn't make sense to me, as we can also get this suitor guy as a low top six, ranked 200, like three rounds later, just way better value. Now, next you guys, I'm offering the Devils buy step for a second round pick. I feel like the Sharks and the Devils like to make trades. Buy step was scratched for us. Honestly, looking at the death, we don't really need him. Gonna give him a chance to, you know, get some more ice time. Value's pretty equal. The second round pick is slightly more, but on the block, they're like, buy stat. So they said yes. Okay, there we go. And now next you guys, I'm offering the Panthers a few forward prospects for their third round pick. There's a guy who have pinned up that should go around there. 63 low top nine is pretty average. Medium bomb six will never sign. Even this medium top nine, only 62 at 21, is pretty meh. They said no, okay. Honestly, could throw in Davidson there too. He's a medium top six defenseman. Now they say yes. And now next year, guys, it was a tough decision for me, but I think we have to move on from Thomas Hurdle. As I mentioned, he's got three more years at 8 million. The fourth year is going to be done in like a week, so it doesn't really count. Last season, didn't even have 50 points playing second line. 33. If he continues to regress, this contract's going to really hurt us. we got a bunch of rookies coming up that will need to get paid, so I'd rather move on from this contract right now, especially if we do plan on bringing Ovechkin back. Luckily, Buffalo here, we're bringing back Skinner's contract, which is just expiring anyways, but... Uh, you have to do it at the deadline and our first round pick. So pretty good value. I'm actually going to try and trade back in that first round to get some more picks of the future. But let's see what the Sabres say to this. They like them. Trades accepted. All right. That's awesome. So I was actually eyeing the Montreal picks. So we can get that goalie who could be good. Actually, you know what, guys? I changed my mind. So I just simmed to our pick here. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, some actually pretty high rated guys. Like they're all in the 70s here going in the first round. Vegas, Neuendijk, 81 medium lead at 13. Talis. O'Burn, 82 medium lead at 12. Those are absolute steals. I'm pretty sure they're both made up. As usually the steals in the mid first round are made up players. Stenlin there at 10's medium lead. Same with the No, McCammy, Scantleberry there, Jacobson, Hayes, Holby, Doyle, Dodge. And then you got DuPont going first. He's only a 74, but he is high lead. I mean, Dodge, Doyle, those guys can immediately jump into your top six. So good for Boston LA. Now, our next pick here, we've got some options. But honestly, I think the one that makes the most sense for our team. How can we pass on Lars Hudson? Have all three Hudson brothers, you kidding me? If we can have them all in the NHL at one point, it'll probably not be till like the eighth and final season. I think that'd be very cool. So I don't know if he was like the best pick, but we had to make it. Yeah, 60 overall, medium top four. I'm honestly fine with that. Now, we got an early second round pick here. I am curious to see that goalie we're looking at. I decided we have Daigle. It doesn't really make sense to take a goalie. Now, unless he was like high lead or something crazy, uh, wow, McCauley, 80 overall, medium top six for the Blue Jackets. Are you kidding me? What a pick there by the CBJ. And I just realized I actually took a 61 overall, medium top four defenseman to pick before him, which is kind of funny. And look at this, guys. The goaltender Hubbard goes to the Jets, 72 medium lead. So I'm um, not NHL ready, but definitely higher rated than most goalie prospects. That is crazy. So maybe we should have traded back and, you know, picked him up instead of Hudson. But I feel like, but like I said, we have Daigle. I think getting the three Hudson brothers is pretty cool. So... I'm fine with it. Now, the next pick here, there is a guy I had uh, pinned, Cappy, John Cappy from Denmark. Please be good. And he's a 75. Wow, medium top six, grinder. Could definitely eventually be in our bomb six. He's got truculence as well out of the draft. This is a great pick in the second round. Our next pick here, guys, is in the third round, number 79. Have another guy pinned. I'm hoping he didn't get taken yet. And no, he didn't. Lundin here, the gem. Let's hope Oscar Lundin's good. And he's a 66 low top six. All right, I was hoping for a bit more. 
Again, you feel like you can't always trust these gems. Our next pick here, guys, is actually the last pick in the fourth round. I think at this point, honestly, too, we're just taking all of our pins. There's a guaranteed low top six guy, but I'm going to take the highest ranked, which I think is Kerman here. Guaranteed low elite. And as you guys can see, he's only 49 overall, but honestly, for the fourth round, it's not too bad. And now we have the last pick in the fifth round. I hate having the last pick because as you always have to scroll back to see like their rating and stuff. So I guess it'd be Sadeen here getting taken next. And Sadeen's a 55 low elite. We'll take that. Last pick in the sixth round now. Oh no, one of our guys got taken. I messed up, but uh, that's all right. We'll take Suter here who's a guaranteed low top six. And he's 52 overall, so a little bit low, but what are you gonna do? We have one more pick here, guys, in the seventh. So at this point, we're just shooting in the dark. I mean, Beck could be medium top four. Gunnarsson could be medium elite. If he's a medium elite, that definitely make me feel better about missing on that guy in the first round. He's a medium fringe, all right. So what are you gonna do? Like I said, we went for the third brother there rather than the goalie prospect we knew was probably better. Overall, I think that was a solid draft. And now next, you guys are at the re-sign phase. Obviously got a lot of money to hand out here. Luckily, we do have 32 million in cap space. Hopefully we can fit everybody in. So Ovechkin, I mentioned, him and Ranching were just too good of a duo. We can actually get him cheaper. So I think one year uh, makes more sense. He honestly probably will retire. If he does one year at nine, we're immediately saving, you know, three million bucks on his last contract. So I think that's pretty fair. Addison wants to come back. He's an 88 and he wants 10 million. We'll, we'll think about it. Jeff Skinner, we don't have a spot for. So I'm just gonna let him go. We just took him back uh, so that trade would happen. If Logan Church still wants eight, I just can't justify it. He wants 3.2, okay, to bring back the captain. He honestly might be playing fourth line for us, which I feel bad about, but if he takes 3 million bucks on one year, we'll bring back the captain, try and run it back here, and get back-to-back -back cups. Kalen wants 4 million. I don't think he's proven it on four years. Okay, it stays around that. At that point, it might be worth it. The only thing is, I gotta see how the money breaks down. This year, obviously, we're paying Ovi. Next year, he won't be, so... We might have a little bit extra. Also, to regards to the goalies, Tegel's now down to an 86 after being an 89. That is crazy. I just realized, too, totally forgot to check the awards. We'll do that after. Now, Blackwood, I wouldn't mind bringing back as a backup. 1.5 million, I think it's quite fair. And this Cappy guy who we just drafted, I'm actually going to assign to have him play in the AHL as a rookie. And there we go, guys. The captain's coming back. Way cheaper deal than he was asking for at the beginning of the season. Blackwood as well, coming back to be the backup. Ovechkin said yes to the one year 9 million. I think that was very fair. Rest of these, I just believe, are AHL contracts. And now we still have 21.3 million in cap space. I actually see our bio penalty retained salary, both $0 now. That's probably helping us out there a lot as well. And the only players we really have left to sign are Addison and Kalen in. So we do have the money to get both of them under contract. I think Addison's been too good not to keep. He wants a four year deal at 10 million. I'll do four years at nine. I think that's still a little bit pricey, but he has been like first page defensive scoring the last few years. And then Kalen, because we have the money right now, I think I do want to try and get locked up long term, just like Nemich. We'll do 4.4 for four. I think the exact same offer. See what he says. All right, so Addison there wants more money. Kalen, though, said yes. Try offering Addison an extra 500K here. We still have 17 million. And there you go. He said yes to that contract. He finally got, you know, his big payday. And I mean, what's kind of crazy, guys? So we still have $9 million in cap space. And like the team is set. We got our top six defensemen. We got our two goalies. Of course, we got our 12 forwards. So really, we just have $9 million to work with at the deadline if we want to. Or if there is a guy we want to sign, could bring him in. But at that point, of course, we have to like trade somebody away. And I like I mentioned, guys, totally forgot to show you the awards. First thing here, though, playoff scoring. So Will Smith had 35 points. He actually had eight more than Ranton, but Ranton had 22 goals. Wow. I mean, honestly, I don't know. He was a minus one somehow. I probably still give the con Smythe to him. Scoring almost a goal a game. Smith, though, 35 is impressive. Obi there at 31. That top line was just carrying. Addison almost a point per game. Same with Eklund, actually. Couture looked pretty good there with 19. Let's see. Daigle stats in the playoffs. He actually came alive. 914-297. Love seeing that from him. Now, obviously, playoff Torino, our road to it. We had the reverse sweep against the Oilers. Best of seven ends the Kraken. Jets in six, Canadians in five. They went through the Penguins, swept the Blue Jackets, and the Rangers before falling to us. And now, look at the awards here, guys. You'll love to see that. Stanley Cup champion, San Jose Sharks. Team awards there, obviously, got the Clarence S. Campbell, too. Individual, Kaprizov ended up winning the Arrush Trophy. So, we did pass Ranch, and that kind of sucked. Honestly, they'll take the Stanley Cup every day instead. Barkov there got the Hart Trophy, though. McCarr, James Norris. You got Goudreau with the Lady Bing. McQueen, Calder. Smith, of course, the Con Smythe. Kolosov there, Vezda Trophy, okay. I was honestly not sure who was gonna win that. He also got the William Jennings Trophy, Pesci, Bill Masterton, Flyers coach Jack Adams, Barkov Selkie, and Ted Lindsay, and then Kaprizov, Marisha Shard. Wait a minute, so I totally skipped by the Calder Trophy winner. It was Roger McQueen. Actually, I just remember Daigle's not counted as a rookie. See, I really wonder if he did count as a rookie, would he have won it? I think there's a really good shot, unfortunately. I guess we'll never know. So 
AHL again. Laval there actually went back to back, called their cups. Uh, you look at the AHL awards. One of the Grieva twins, MVP, that's pretty cool to see. Sagas had the most goals. I think he had like 40 or whatever. Volchenkov, best rookie. Look at the rest here. Vimelka, best goalie. Pilik there, MVP of the playoffs. Borgen is on Lavelle as well. Got the community involvement. And then Seville, lowest goals against. All right, guys. We're at the free agency period here. I'm curious to see who's available because obviously we do have some money if we want to spend it. Celebrini there, still an RFA looking for that contract. Mark Stone, 91 overall, wants 10.8. I mean, we have 9.3. If he sticks around for like a week or something, we could get him. Kucherov, 90 overall. I think like he probably plays a lot better. Yeah, last year he had 90 points. Great playmaker. I mean, I just don't know. We don't quite have the money for him. Again, he'd have to come down an asking price. And even then, I'm not sure if we have a spot on the roster for him. Is this Michael Rasmussen? What the heck? I've never seen him get to an 88. That's nuts. Tony D'Angelo, 87, wants 13.5. When you look at that, I guess Asa gave us a deal. One overall higher. Asked for 4 million less. Honestly, Pavel Zak, 87, asking for 4.9. I think it's very fair. He's got four X factors there. He had like almost 60 points last year. Power forward. If we needed a guy for the third line, he would definitely be a great option. But again, I think I'm going to run that all rookie line. Looking at goaltenders here, Scarab's available. 90 overall, wants 8 million. As an RFA though, okay. I thought he was a free agent. You got Demko behind him. Let's take a look at two-way goalies just in case somebody really good's available. What the heck? Almquist here, not drafted. 20-55, medium elite. Definitely give him a contract. A couple other teams interested though. We'll see if we can land them. Now looking at two ace skaters here. Really nothing that's jumping out to me. All the higher rated guys are 26. They're almost done growing. Will Cooley. I'll actually uh, sign him. You play with Maggio back on the spits. That'd be kind of fun. And yeah guys. Apart from that. I think we just have to wait a week or so. To see if Stone and Kucherov's asking price comes down. Also too guys. Next year we're trying to trade Thomas Bortolo. The Red Wings for a second round pick. I like him. He played for Michigan. Unfortunately he just hasn't really found a spot on our team. Has a good amount of value though, probably because of the cheap contract, 1.5 for the next five years. Send of the Red Wings there for a second, I think it's great value. And the second's actually worth a bit more, but again, it's on the block, they want Bordelow. I think they say yes, and they do. Now unfortunately guys, that meme elite free agent goalie and Onquist went with the Marlies, but I feel like you know, our goaltending is obviously pretty set right now. With Daigle, this trade makes no sense. We drop down a round and get a seventh for a medium starter. Again, the prospect goalie trades make no sense. There you go. Will Cooley accepted? I honestly think HL4 group's pretty good. Oh my. This is a big time offer. The Maple Leafs want to trade us John Tavares for Hudson a third. And so Boda, obviously Hudson's a non-starter. We got to keep the brothers together. But what's kind of funny is Tavares actually almost signed with the Sharks, I believe. I think they offered him the most money, like 13-5 around there. He's down on 86. Still producing though. I think that's 72 points in the year last season. Very just good all around center. He's definitely a lot slower now, not as physical. Not bad at all. The thing is, that's a lot of money for two years. I feel like any contract we're looking at is probably a one year deal. And like I was saying before, guys, I just sent him through a week to see if Stone and Kucherov are still available. If they are, has their, has their asking price come down? And it has. Okay, so Stone wants nine, Kucherov wants eight, nine. Let me see who makes more sense for us. The two way forward in Stone is obviously. One of the better defensive wingers in the game. 98D awareness. Are you kidding me? Or Kucherov here is just like an all-offensive guy. All right, guys. So I was just looking at the team. We could definitely use an upgrade on our second line. I was trying to decide between Mark Stone and Nikita Kucherov. Honestly, at the end of the day, I feel like, although Stone's very good defensively, I didn't even realize he had 90 points last year as well. He's a two-way forward. We already got a lot of two-way forwards on this team. So I think Kucherov would help the chemistry a bit more being a playmaker. He also essentially had 90 points last year. You can and you can see he's been a very consistent scorer. He's also asking for slightly less here. So we got 9.7, one year deal on Kucherov, till he's 35, let's do 9.5. Honestly, I didn't expect us to have this money, but I think because we traded away Hurdle, it ended up really working out for us. So we'll see what he says to that. Leafs are offering us Tavares again. So again, I'm gonna say no. Still gonna hear back from Kucherov. Again, Leafs offer us Tavares. And let's go, Nikita Kucherov, the member of the Sharks. So we're gonna have a nasty top six. I was looking at it. What's probably going to happen now is one of our three rookies is going to stay in the AHL one more year. Probably the sniper because uh, his role is depth four. The other two have like a third line forward role. Also, the sniper did only have 10 assists last year. So maybe he can work on his uh, playing ability a bit one more season in the A. And now finally here, guys, I'll show what the team is looking like for next season. No reason why we can't go back to back. I feel like this team is quite stacked. So no change in the first line. They played so well. Why mess it up? And plus five chem still. Smith's now in 92. Second line, I'm actually super excited for. We got the Eklund brothers playing together with Kucherov. Originally, I was going to have that rookie line, but I couldn't pass up having the two brothers together. Third line's now Weisblatt, Knack, and Zedelin. So just a big improvement on last year's third line. Fourth line, I got Kuchur down to an 81. Hopefully, he still plays decent there. Playing with Svechkov and Musty. 
Defensively here, pretty much the same. You got Chikra and Addison top pair. We handled the Lynn and Hudson on the second with Kalen and Nemich on the bottom. They're all getting plus ones. I feel like that's gotta be, you know, one of the better defensive depths in the league. Goaltending wise, Daigle starting now at 87. Blackwood backing out there, still 82. So again, overall, I think this team looks really good. HL wise, they're gonna be sick again. First line, you got Zetterberg now at 80. Playing with Sawgas there is 82. Holton at 83. I want him on an HL team, but there's just nowhere for him. Like, he'd have to play, you know, in the top nine. He's not better than anyone there. And in terms of a fourth line player, he just simply does not have the stats for that. Defensive awareness, 82. Even though he's a power four, he's only got three star physical, so he's just got to play in the HL a bit longer. Second line there, you got the two Spitfires playing with Jack Hughes. Third line's really solid. Even the fourth line there, you got the rookie and Cappy. Defensively, a couple 80s and Thrun and Hudson. Like I was saying, this HL team looks really good. Olsen, there's an 81 starter. I think, you know, both teams could win championships next year if we can get lucky in the sim. But before in the video, guys, I'll show the ratings for next year. Like I said, expecting big things for both teams. As you can see here, that NHL team has 99 offense, 93 defense, 87 goaltending. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.